In this, this episode, episode of Lift Dark Builds, we restore, restore our, our canoe! canoe. Well, hey there. Welcome back to Lift Art Studios. It is Labor Day weekend, and I have brought my fiberglass canoe down to the shop today to finish my half-assed restoration. Painted the inside, refiberglassed some of the inside, and now I have to fix some cracks on the outside with some more fiberglass repair. Paint the outside, redo the seats, make a new crossbar, and uh, assemble everything and make it happy and uh, healthy, if a canoe can be healthy. Uh, and then of course, cut out some new vinyl stickers to go on the outside. All right, here it is. It's a Mohawk fiberglass canoe. Got some, uh, got some work to do. I know nothing about it. I bought it from a local outdoor consignment shop here in town. It was quite cheap. I think I paid 200 bucks for it, which makes sense. It wasn't in the best shape. And the first outing, very first outing we took it on, we ended up on the Greenbrier River in West Virginia in uh, water that was quite low. And we scratched the absolute hell out of the bottom, which is, is all superficial, but it prompted me to want to just take it down and bring it back up. I feel like we disrespected her a little bit on her first outing and uh, it was a little rough around the edges anyway. So uh, I'm not a boat guy i've never done any boat work but it's not that hard fiberglass is pretty easy uh it's just messy but i'm used to a mess so we're gonna get it off the car here this is my transport vehicle my mercedes honestly roof racks on a sedan are a little easier than uh putting it in a truck i'm gonna get it in set it up lay out my parts and all the repair stuff that i got and we'll move on a little something different this time I always hear that it's better to get one of those like rubberized plastic canoes versus the fiberglass ones because the plastic canoes will bend around rocks. Whereas fiberglass canoes, fiberglass doesn't bend. So if you hit something hard enough, it's gonna crack. However, fixing a fiberglass canoe is a lot easier than fixing one of those fancy rubber canoes because fiberglass resin and fiberglass cloth is really easy to get, it's cheap. And honestly, it's not that hard to do. Fiberglass canoes are often cheaper because of that reason. So anyway, fun little tidbit about canoes. All right, so here she is, upside down on some sawhorses. So now I'm gonna lay out, perhaps on this table, all the stuff that I got to make this happen. Okay. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, we got some fiberglass resin. We got fiberglass cloth. I found this on Amazon. It's a match and patch gel coat repair kit. This is basically fiberglass resin, but you can tint it a certain color so that it matches your existing paint. I don't even know if I'm gonna use this because I'm painting the whole boat outside with this. It is a flag blue polyurethane topside paint. Uh, these are keel protectors. They go on this front edge. These are like rubber, super adhesive deals. I may or may not use these. I think what I might do is just cut a strip of fiberglass cloth and reinforce that front edge and just call it a day. And of course I have the original seat brackets and the cross piece that I either am going to repair or rebuild. And then, you know, gloves and stuff. First order of business is probably sand, clean, and uh, do some localized fiberglass repair. You always wanna put some PPE on when you're working with fiberglass.
Um, I think we got a good baseline now. We kind of sanded the whole bottom, all the trouble areas with 80 grit. Exposed some real problems that were probably unrelated. They were there before I bought it. Three spots there. We had some chipping here that we had to sand off. There was an impact, I think, at the front here, which buckled this piece here. May or may not do something about that. Uh, the bottom itself is fairly solid. We got one or two parts where it went all the way through to the inner layer of fiberglass. That one's probably the worst. A few hairline cracks down the keel. The keel is this sort of middle ridge. This one has a very subtle keel. Uh, then we got a really good crack right there and some erosion. Uh, pretty bad section here. That's all the way through to the inside layer of fiberglass, the same layer that your feet would be in contact with. So this is almost all the way through the boat. So my plan is use that gel coat repair kit to do the localized problems. That or I'm gonna cut little tiny patches of fiberglass and just do it normal fiberglass resin style. I'm kind of making all this up as I go. I'm gonna learn by doing. And uh, you're gonna learn probably what not to do. I'm gonna explore my options. I'm gonna read the instruction manual for this gel coat repair kit and uh, lay out some fiberglass mat. Before that, I'm gonna sand a little bit more. Sand past the problem area. That way we get it right. So I think we're good in prep. We got a few inches around these problem areas. We got a few inches back from this keel section here. We've got a few inches back from this real bad spot and we got a crack up here. So back here, I noticed something interesting. You can actually see where they used a different kind of fiberglass for these front nose and tail sections or bow and stern sections, keel sections, whatever you boat guys call it. Uh, and then for the main body, they go to maybe a less hard type of fiberglass. I'm not exactly sure the different kinds. You can see more of the fibers in this one, but you can see fibers in both, they're just different colors. Maybe the front, it looks like it has maybe more resin in it. That might be what it is. Either way, we're gonna fix it with, I have two different kinds of fiberglass. I have this stuff, which is more modern, and then I have the more traditional fiberglass matting. This is what the boat is made out of, so I think I should probably use this to do my patching. Although this stuff doesn't quite flex like this stuff does. So I think I'm gonna use this stuff. And if there's some boat guy out there screaming at your screen right now, sorry, it's a $200 canoe. I'm making stuff up and I'm too impatient to Google stuff, so. We're gonna use this flexible matting because it's really nice to work with. I'm gonna mix up, I got a quarter of this hardener left, so I'm gonna use what I imagine is a quarter of this, add the rest of this, call it a day. Seven ounces of resin, that's quite a bit of resin but I'm gonna need a lot because I need to paint on some first, then lay the mat on, and then paint the rest of the resin over top of the mat and smoothing out the bubbles and stuff. So don't have a heck of a lot of working time here. I'm gonna go. There's all the hardener. We wanna start mixing. We don't wanna aerate it. We just wanna smoothly mix it all. The resin is hardening right now, so I gotta move quick paintbrush and one of these. I think we're probably pretty well mixed. I don't want to go too far and I want to have enough time to work with this. So there we go. All right, so we got that. We're gonna go ahead and lay our mat down. Pull it down somewhere in here. Now I want to take our brush and brush some resin over top. That's not bad. Now I got to keep moving because I got two more patches to do. So, okay. Keep it going. Keep it going.
Look at that. It is set. It is like a jello. No more liquid. Man, I almost ran out of time. Holy cow. All right, so here's what we've come away with. We've got one layer of matting over our problem areas. I kind of, it started to set right here, so it's a little higher build than I'd like. It's gonna be a reasonable amount of sanding. Ah, got some bubbles here. I can push those in with my finger. I didn't stretch this piece like I wanted to. I hope this was the right fiberglass to use. It certainly is nicer to work with than the other stuff. All right, now, I think I'm going to turn my attention to the seats, or more specifically, the seat frames. So these are the seat frames that were in the canoe. They had wicker seats and the wicker was tucked into this groove. I wanna use what I have. So I bought the canoe, the guy at the uh, consignment place sold me these butt pads with the canoe as well. So I'm not just gonna strap these to the seats. The good news is it has these metal pieces that secure the seat frames to the actual body of the canoe. Here is the cross piece. This goes across the middle of the canoe. It gives it a lot of structure and it happens to be at the exact middle center of gravity for the canoe. So you can pick the canoe up upside down place this piece around your neck and on your shoulders and actually carry the canoe by yourself. So I think what I'm gonna to try to do is find a new piece of wood and remake this. Anyway, enough rambling. I think I'm gonna take these metal brackets off and isolate the wood pieces and sand them up, clean them up, maybe hit them with a router again on this inside chamfer and um, figure out how to fill this hole. I'm done for the day. So I'm gonna clean up a bit and I'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, see you in a bit. All right, good morning. Welcome back to the canoe. Uh, the resin dried up last night. Sitting a little proud, but we are gonna take to it with a sander today. I think I'm just gonna jump right into it and get to sanding and see how it comes out. We got it looking pretty good. It doesn't look like it, but it's quite flat. So I'm just gonna finish sanding the sides, but uh, go ahead and get it, get it sanded down in uniform and then wipe it down with acetone, clean it, mask off this gunnel, and uh, then paint it blue. So it's exciting. So here we go, I'm gonna do some more sanding. Now I'm gonna wipe the whole thing down with acetone, which will clean it, get all the dirt, dust, grease, whatever else off of it. And then I will tape the gunnel, that metal lip down the edge, come back and trim it with a razor blade to make sure that tape joint is nice and tight. And uh, then we're ready to paint.
Oh, gosh darn. That looks mighty good. A few runs here and there, a few brush marks here and there, but remember y'all, this was a $200 canoe. And that paint job is stellar. Gosh, I love that color. Flag blue, apparently. Look at that. So now, I can turn my attention to the hardware so when she's dry, we can flip her over and uh, reassemble the inside. And then my favorite part, make a new sticker for the side. I'm thinking, so it used to be called a mohawk. I'm thinking this one should be named the faux hawk. Boo, you stink! I know it's terrible, but come on, it's a canoe. It's a proper vessel for a dad joke. All right, we're back on the canoe project. My girlfriend Courtney has been helping me uh, with the second half of this project. She'll be here in a bit. She works a real fancy job. But I've had to do some cleaning today. It's the Tuesday after Labor Day. And um, second coat of paint looks great. Throughout my shop clean, it's been covered in a layer of dust, but that's fine because this is the final coat. It's got some runs, it's got some imperfections. You can still see some scratches, but who cares? It's a canoe. The most important thing is it's got two more layers of armor on it now to keep it safe in these rivers. A little update on the other wooden pieces. So my cedar crossbar rebuild came out really nice. If I do say so myself, I rounded the edge corners. We painted it with this helmsman. My one worry is that this is cedar, and cedar is not as as strong as, I believe this is oak. If it is oak, I know it's not as strong. It, it's about half the weight. Uh, so this is probably gonna break. I could probably snap it right now versus how this one feels, which much, much stronger. This one, if I had to restore it, is not a lost cause. Uh, I've just ripped the hole out here. I could epoxy this closed or put a plate over here with a hole that strengthens everything up. So I'm gonna keep this, but for visuals, we'll go ahead and install our new cedar crossbar. And then our seat supports are over here. They're dry. One of them's got two coats, the other one's got one, because that's all I have patience for. I think it's gonna be just fine. But when Courtney gets here, she was starting to work on uh, paracord weaving. So we're gonna do this seat in paracord, I believe. Uh, so that'll be cool. And uh, Courtney is super good at like detail work. So I'm excited for you guys to see her learn how to do that and then apply it to this sweet canoe.
gonna work on a way to flip this canoe over and have it be supported so we can work on the inside. We have all of the stainless hardware still from before. And these are the hangers for uh, the seat brackets. And then on the inside, we have these, these are for like paddle boards. They have adhesive on the back and it's like rubber. So this will be for our feet and the dogs when they join us, we'll have something to grip onto. And because the inside is now white, this will help not make the floor so bright and reflecty in our eyeballs. So, so this will be the last thing we put in. Okay, Courtney's here, the paracord expert. You see, I've been oh, telling- Oh geez, the new paracord expert. Just telling people about your paracord. It's gonna be very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're here. This is, we will hope to enjoy this canoe together. So it's only fitting that we finish it together. So there's not much left. I kind of already briefed people on what we got to do. Yeah. How are you feeling about I'm it? I'm feeling great. Yeah. Let's get it done. The goal today is to get it out of the shop, whether that means it's completely finished or 90% finished. This is the satisfying part, pulling off masking. How, how's yours going? It's going great. <laughs> One rip so far. Let's give the people a bird's eye view. Oh no, it's ripping, it's ripping, it's Yeah, ripping. mine's doing the same it's thing. It's like rips at the top. We'll have to come back with like a utility knife. Yeah. It wasn't doing that before. There we go, yeah. there we got it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. These rivets are really loose and we got paint on the top surface. I did, it's worse down there. Um, and they just don't look good. I don't think painting the gunnels is gonna be in the scope of the project, but I think we could paint this. And so to get rivets out, you just drill them out and I have a rivet gun so we can re-rivet these and make them nice and tight. I don't wanna do that anyway because this gap sucks. Yeah, it's And it's pretty like nice. kind of separating. So let me get a drill bit and drill that out. it used to be bolted right there. Wow. <laughs> that is, That's wow, beautiful. that looks great. Look at this. Well, it's an interesting point of debate for the people. Yes. So, <clears throat> I think I, I may have said this before, but it was called the Mohawk. Yes, when we bought it. I theorized about rebranding it the Fauxhawk. She hates that idea. I, un I understand the sentiment. It's, fa it's fairly it's, lazy. It's a lazy noise. I just, oh, it makes me think of middle school. I don't like it. No. I'm not so much married to it. I just, in, in some sick way, find <laughs> joy in how much pain it brings you. <laughs> if you didn't react. This is why I keep you. <laughs> well, if you didn't react so powerfully, I'd probably move on to another name, but you're like, I hate it with my I don't whole hate, being. No, I don't hate it with my whole being. It's just a little cringy. But there's this beautiful spot 
right here where a nice white sticker is gonna look so, so good. I really wanna find a good name for it. We could even do some like piece of artwork, like a mountain cut out here. No, we totally could. That would be awesome. Or the Roanoke Star, I could cut out in vinyl and put right here. And you can have it like overlap. You can make it really big and overlap, like cut off at the edges. Mm hmm Oh, it's coming together. Yeah, honestly, at this point, I want to remake this piece out of principle because it doesn't match with that. <laughs> I want to find a different finish. This is like history of finishes. This is like old epoxy that's been bleached in the sun and then poorly prepped by me and then clear coated with something that has a different color to it. So replicating this is going to be pretty that's hard. Be fun. We're really all relying on your paracord to draw the attention away from this terrible finish. Well, it's coming together slowly. For okay. Sure. <laughs> I messed something up right before I came out here and I'm going to go back and Let's go check in on your paracord. Really attempt what I did wrong. The people How probably. Much I have to unwind. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh damn. Yeah, come take the tour. Progress. So yeah, what oh. that we've made so far. This is the pattern that I'm going off of from the urbanoarsman.com. So <laughs> thanks to that. But I can't figure out what I messed up because this. So I'm going down the row of stitching here, and each every other one loops around the previous one. And so, you know, you do one straight across and then one comes up and loops around it. And so all of the diagonals coming up loop around. But I'm coming over here and there's, I already, that one's already part of like a looped pair. And so I have nothing to loop around it. Bless and I'm just man. very confused, so. Hmm. But other than that, it's been going well. I'm worried that I miscounted. So there has to be the same number of tops, tops uh, on each side. So these side ones are spaced closer together and there's nine on each. But see, so I have, I have five already done on each side. And so I'm going with the pattern. And so you start with the center one here and then you go one over and one over and one over and one over. And so now. So you're about to go to the left on the bottom would be the so next one. So it should one. be here. And so I'm on the second to last one, and it's telling me that I need to go up and loop around the sixth. But I only have five. So somehow I skipped one of these. Uh-oh. It looks great as it is. You know, it probably works as a seat. <laughs> well... I wasn't here for this, so I couldn't be less helpful. I know what I did. I know what I did. Okay, so... On this side, as these go down, these also sort of carry on that every other pattern. So one of them, as you come up here, each one of these stitches, the out end of it, one, the, like, one goes across and then the other out end goes up and ties over here. Mm -hmm. And so it goes across and then up and then across and then up. And I went here, I went straight up when I really needed to go down. I needed to loop around and go down. Mm. So I really only have to unstitch this one and that one. And then I'll loop this around oh, this little nice. edge and come back down there. Yeah, so I skipped this one. I'm about to say, because the bottom looks like it's, it's offset to the right. Yeah. You see that? That's what it is. So I only have to undo three of the stitches, which is will only take me 15 minutes. That's much better than I thought you were going to say. That's awesome. Here what we go. an immense contribution to the faux hawk. I've just been listening to we hate it. We as a unit hate it. It's terrible. <laughs> but it might be so bad that we have to do it. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning toward it. Well, if we could, don't come up with anything else, it's for sure getting yeah. named the Pelock. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let what? Court get to it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep listening to my crime podcast. Woo! Woo! Have you Woo! seen these? Not finished. Check these suckers out. Holy, look at that wee thing. This one's not finished. Pretend there's one more right there. I, I, if, you, <laughs> if you hadn't said anything, I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> this is gonna be the dopest canoe of all canoes. All right, shall we? Yes. And that is a finished canoe. I have one. Sorry, I don't know if you wanted that. 
Hell yeah, let's go we try it, it out. I forgot oars. <laughs> <laughs> One or the old center section. Oh. You okay? Yeah. You missed. You missed. You're good. All right. All right. The we've, river. We've come down here to Wasina Park. Well, Roanoke has a river through it, and it's rad. It took us five minutes to drive from my shop to the Roanoke River. Let's put in, as they say in the boating world. Okay. All right. It's in the water. Yeah, and this part tends to be a little quick, so. Hey, oh my God, this seat feels good. Ooh. Hey, it floats. I mean, I knew it floated before, but. It floats now. We proved it again. Oh, this paddle is just handcrafted from the finest materials. It, I mean, it doesn't not work. <laughs> kind of your standard canoeing experience. Yeah. I gotta say, babe, these seats are, I know this one's not technically finished, but it's it's not it's, uncomfortable. Like it's, it gets the job done. Cause I, I have a narrow bony butt. So for my tiny little bony butt, it's actually great because my my butt bones fit in between the wood. What mm -hmm. what's your seat experience? My seat experience is great. It's it's sturdy, it holds me up, but it's soft. It gets the job done. Better than a plank of wood, which was our original idea. So It's a beautiful afternoon on the river. <laughs> -na -na -na. Oh, we're gonna All right, time to sand the paint oh, off. Oh. There goes the new paint. All right. Well, it's it was so gonna good. it was gonna happen at some point. <laughs> the canoe's done. We put a lot of work into it and uh, fresh paint, fresh seats. I'm and uh, take it out again. Oh, uh, wait, guys. <laughs> <laughs>